Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to day two of our Education Abroad Fair here at CSU. We're glad you joined us. Um, I'm about to jump into introductions, but before that, I would like to start this presentation with our CSU land acknowledgement. Colorado State University acknowledges with respect that the land we are on today is the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations and peoples. This was also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for numerous other Native tribes. We recognize the Indigenous peoples as original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. CSU is founded as a land-grant institution, and we accept that our mission must encompass access to education and inclusion, and significantly that our founding came at a dire cost to Native nations and peoples whose land this university was built upon. This acknowledgement is the education and inclusion we must practice in recognizing our institutional history, responsibility, and commitment. So thanks again for being here with us today. My name is Nicole, I use she, her pronouns. I work in our education abroad office and I support many of our CSU staff and faculty led programs here at CSU. All right, let's start by talking about some myth busting. So some of you may have attended our education abroad 101 presentation this morning. And if you didn't have the opportunity to attend that, we did record it and it will be posted to the education abroad fair page by the end of the day. So I encourage you to take a look at that. In that presentation, they go over an overview of education abroad at CSU, the skills you gain from education abroad, why it's important, and the different program models. This presentation is going to focus on specifically um, programs that are a good fit for college of vet med and biomedical science students. So before we jump in, let's dispel some myths. First things first, an education abroad should not delay your graduation. In fact, with good planning, it will enhance your degree, help you graduate any time, and in some cases, it might even help you graduate early. Second, there is a myth that education abroad is more expensive than staying here at CSU and in Fort Collins. Generally speaking, there will be expensive programs, but there are many programs that are similar price points to staying here at CSU in a semester in Fort Collins, and some are even less, and I'm going to talk about one of those today. Third, if you can start early and talk to your academic advisor about going abroad, you will be able to fulfill course requirements to go abroad. This could be courses required for your major or electives, so we encourage you to get started early. Lastly, we have a risk management team here at CSU that constantly monitors and communicates some of the challenges or risk, risk students face while they're abroad. By working together with our risk team, with our office, and yourself, we can foster safe and successful experiences abroad. So on our website, you're going to see a list of our recommended programs. So our department has collaborated with all departments across CSU to create a strategic list of programs that are good, good for your major. So as you're exploring, this is a really good place to start so that you can feel confident that the programs that you're reviewing will have courses that are relevant for your major. It's really important that you still meet with your academic advisor as you're selecting a program, but this could be a great place to start um, as you're looking on our website and beginning to dive in. So I have decided to pick a few of these programs from this recommended programs list to talk with you today, and it's just a starting point. So the first one I wanna talk about is an exchange program. I don't know if any of you have been to Australia before. I have not. This is a place I've always wanted to go in my life. This program is the University of Tasmania. Tasmania is the island state of Australia, which is renowned for its rugged and beautiful landscapes, temperate climate, and relaxed lifestyle. The campus of the university is in Hobart, which is the capital city of Tasmania, and it's located five minutes by car from the city center. What's neat about this location is in this photo in particular, you can see the city in the background, which is Mount Wellington, and students have access to this busy urban community as well. It's a short, a short drive from the Riverside City Center where you can access parks, shops, natural areas, and more. So like most of our exchange programs, there are a limited number of placements available each term, 
and preference is given to Colorado and state residents who demonstrate high financial need, determined by the financial aid office. So we encourage you to check it out, look early, and start planning early. And you can go to this program on our website and explore a little bit more about the courses. There is a wide selection of courses available at the University of Tasmania, and you can take 12 to 15 credits per semester. For housing on this program, there are both on-campus and off-campus housing for you to consider. So some students are really looking for that flexibility, which is nice. All right, let's head over to England. This is another exchange program I wanted to highlight today, the University of Exeter, which is located in Exeter, England. The language here is English, and you can go here for a semester or for a full academic year. There are shared apartments and houses, and these are offered and administrated by the university. There's a great uh, selection of courses for majors in biological sciences, zoology, computer science, math, and psychology. Exeter is a top ranked university in the UK and the world. There's three campuses in Exeter, St. Luke's campus and the Maid Stratham campus. I have a third campus near the coast of Falmouth and CSU students have the option to attend either of these campuses. It's about a 15 to 20 minute walk to downtown Exeter and London is about a two and a half hour train ride away. Exeter is a fun college town that has a population of around 130,000 residents and the town itself dates back to the Roman era. Students really enjoy Exeter for its parks, the villages and beaches and the relaxed countryside pace of English culture. All right, another program I wanted to highlight today is an affiliate provider that we partner with called USAC. This location in particular is in Costa Rica and San Ramon. And San Ramon is located in the beautiful Central Valley of Costa Rica just a 20 minute walk through many hiking trails that let you wander through the mountainside. It's truly the heart of Costa Rica where you'll encounter friendly people and a peaceful, relaxed lifestyle in the mountains. So you get to enjoy a small town atmosphere with easy access to the cultural, historic and urban highlights of San Jose, as well as access to the Pacific coast. You can enjoy a, a coursework at a local university here with, that has around 2000 students. And at this university, you have access to campus laboratories and additional resources. The university provides easy access to a nature reserve administered by the school with a biological station included. Through USAC Costa Rica Life Science, Spanish Language and Culture, you can participate in independent research, internships, volunteering, or a field related institution. So this is a really cool way to get hands-on experiential learning to learn about local flora and fauna and field study courses. This program is specifically designed for science majors interested in learning more about health, ecology, and conservation biology in Costa Rica. There is coursework in life and health sciences, Latin American culture, as well as Spanish language. What's really unique about this program too is that the cost of the program for the semester is more affordable than staying here for a semester at CSU in Fort Collins. One consideration is that this program gets to include a homestay. So that's something that students are really looking for sometimes. And it gives you an amazing opportunity to practice your Spanish language skills. You can go here for a short summer term. There's two options over the summer short or for uh, two sessions to make it a little bit longer as well as a semester and a full academic year. So this is a great program that where students are looking for a lot of flexibility. All right, another affiliate provider, DIS. This program is in Copenhagen and you can go for a semester or for a full academic year. In this program, students um, have the opportunity, opportunity to learn how concepts and issues are perceived, lived and theorized in Europe and reflect on their own cultural norms and values that shaped your own path. These programs can be a little bit more expensive. However, we wanted to highlight that they do offer a discount for CSU students and discounts can be as high as $5,000 for a semester for in-state students. This program also offers a field study option, which is a great opportunity to hone your skills in research, labs, studio, practicum or workshops. With DIS, you get to travel on your own um, class and faculty on two course integrated study tours in Europe. You'll get to visit important sites and meet with local experts who add their perspectives to your own knowledge of the field. There's a variety of housing options on this program, including homestays and living and learning communities. 
So the last program I wanted to highlight today is a CSU staff and faculty led program called Community Education and Health in Zambia. This program will be getting will be taking place next summer, summer 2023, and there'll be coursework in the spring semester leading up to your departure in May. What's neat about this program and a lot of our staff and faculty led programs that you might have learned in our Education Abroad 101 session is that you will earn three direct CSU credits on this program. The course is called E352A, Reading and Writing the Zambia Experience, and it will fulfill the AUCC1C course requirement. You'll get to live in Livingstone, Zambia, and assist Zambians in educational programs, such as in school, after school programs, adult literacy programs, and physical education programs. You'll also have the opportunity to work in community health areas, such as clinics, home-based care, health education programs, and gender equality programs. The coursework for this course focuses on ethics, motivations, and sustainability of development work. Zambia as a country is full and rich in wildlife and with magnif magnificent forests, wild rivers, and wetlands, including lakes and impressive waterfalls, such as the one you see on the screen now. It's a historically an English-speaking country, and it's also gateway to Victoria Falls and Zimbabwe to the south. The national parks have an amazing amount of opportunities for you to see wildlife and animals, and you will have the opportunity to work on community-driven projects that enjoy and enjoy the natural beauty of all that Zambia has to offer. So now that we've gone over these programs, a lot of questions, some, a lot of students will have questions regarding how credits work. And it really depends on the type of program that you participate on. CSU offers over 100 programs that give students direct CSU credit, just like the program in Zambia I just men mentioned. For other programs, this will be transfer credits. And there's in two steps in ensuring credits will work for your degree. First, you have to have your coursework reviewed by the registrar's office. They will determine how the credits for each, co each course is worth and how it will come back to CSU. And if it will come back as an upper or lower division credit. Second, your academic department will determine how the coursework will fulfill your degree requirements. And then with these approvals, you'll know how the credits will keep you on track to graduate in a timely manner. And once you've decided on your program, the Education Abroad team will be here to advise you on the next steps. We did want to show you a quick look at the transfer credit form. Um, so this is the form that you'll work on in collaboration with the registrar's office, your academic advisor, as well as the Education Abroad office. And we have, step, we have a step-by-step -step guide on this form to help guide you through the process. It's all virtual, which is really nice um, and makes the process a lot more streamlined. There are several professionals that will work with you and support you as you're preparing to go abroad. So you'll have your education abroad team here at CSU, such as myself. You will have a CSU academic advisor or academic success coordinator as well as a program advisor or CSU faculty and staff for the program that you're participating on. We do wanna highlight that we, we do hire students in our office and they're available to support you in helping identifying a program. Here are our current peers, they're amazing and they're um, a great resource for you. They work in our office and they facilitate some of our open advising hours. And I think they provide a great experience for you to hear about studying abroad recently as a CSU student. We also wanted to take some time to talk with you about financial aid and scholarships today. Here you'll see Cindy and Evelyn, they're fantastic. They're our financial aid advisors for education abroad. And there are many different types of scholarships available for education abroad. Some scholarships are awarded through CSU and some scholarships are awarded outside of CSU. So we have an Education Abroad Scholarship Common Application. You, see, you can see both of those deadlines here. There's a deadline coming up October 1, so we really encourage you to consider um, applying to this if you are thinking about applying to a program between the dates of November 1st and September 30th, 2023. Um, and this Scholarship Common App serves as a common application for all Education Abroad Scholarships listed on our website except for the Passport Scholarship, which has a separate application. So as long as you have the qualifying requirements and have applied for the program, which is a study program, a field work, an internship, or research, you will, you will be eligible for an educate, you, 
to apply for an education abroad scholarship. External scholarships will have their own applications and are included also on our website. It's important to note that scholarships will rarely fully fund your program, but they can be invaluable in helping closing the gap between your current financial aid and what you will need abroad. You can make a virtual or in-person appointment with either Seth, Cindy, or Evelyn if you go to our contact us page on our website and schedule an appointment through Navigate. And their email is also included on this slide as well. Great. So if you are interested in talking to us and learning more, we do have open advising hours. And so you'll see here that our peer advisors and staff have a little bit of a different open advising schedule. So I encourage you to take a look at this. You can take a photo of it right now. On the one side of the page is a QR code that will take you to our advising hours listed on our website and instructions on how to schedule an appointment if needed. On the other side is a QR code that includes instructions on how to get to Laurel Hall. Um, it will pull up our location in Google Maps. We're on the northeast side of the Oval. Um, so we hope we get to see you soon. And finally, this is our Start Here page. Um, so if you're excited, if you're ready to go abroad, feel free to scan this QR code. It will take you to a page that lists some next steps for you. Um, and that's about all the time we have today. So thank you so much for being here, spending time with us, learning a little bit about education abroad. And we hope to see you at a later date. Thanks, everyone.